Every time I post an article, I want to have a header image. The header image has to be related to something I'm writing about, but then also it's nice to have some text overlaid on top of it. In this video, I'm going to show you how I make these banner images and I'll show you the code, but more importantly, the approach that I used in order to generate these images so that you might be able to do this on your own. Let's dive in. This code is still developmental. So I have this in my integrated developer environment called RStudio. This is what it looks like so far. I have a few different files. I'll take a second and show you what they do. I need to load a couple of packages. Then I also have some Unsplash keys. I registered with Unsplash to have access to their API, which then I call below. So the first thing I do is I get an image from Unsplash. This is just a little function where I can take any keyword. And what it's going to do with that word is it's going to build a URL. It's going to append the search photos query keyword. And I'm going to pull back one page and 10 per page. And then finally, I give it access to my uh, Unsplash keys. And then get this URL. And finally, I turn it into a JSON object. The JSON object is going to return this uh, complicated uh, structure, but that's common amongst APIs. So then I check to make sure that it returns um, not 200, which would be an error for the API. Using um, a really nice little wrapper function, I can just say from JSON after converting this JSON content to a raw character and then pipe that into a data frame. So that's really nice. I can get the results out and this is gonna be a URL. I put a little if statement in here. If I don't have any results within my data frame, I can go back and I can get some more. In this case, it's just gonna pull a random. So maybe my search term didn't return any uh, results, in which case I can return a random image. So in this way, it doesn't fail. And then finally take the data frame that I made and I'm then going to pull the image out of it. I return 10 of the images. And in this case, I can sample one of the images. So of those 10 that it returns, I sample one and then it gives me the URL. So this is my get image function. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to make that image. And this is where I take that URL and I'm going to download it. You can see a bunch of arguments. Don't worry about those for now. Essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to get an image, pipe it to a URL, and then using the magic package, I'm going to take that URL and convert it to an image within this environment. These lines right here are a feature that I ended up adding. If I end up wanting to make sure my text is positioned properly before getting the image, I pipe in a blank image while I'm modifying and adjusting the font size, and then I can overlay an image on top of that. I'll show you how that works in practice. Next, I added one other clever feature. Sometimes I want to be able to pipe in an image URL where I know the image already exists. If I pipe in, instead of a term, a keyword, if I type in a URL starting with HTTP, it will just take that address and read the image from there. So in this way, I can manually add images that I want. And then lastly, I can get some image details. I can then um, do a couple of transformations to make sure that this is square. And then lastly, I'm going to annotate my image. And this is where all the magic happens. I can annotate my image, put it at the bottom, give it a background color and so on. And then finally, this is just code to return it. And sometimes I test it. What does this look like? So if I go over app.r and I run it, I won't show you all of the shiny code, but essentially this is the interface that allows me to carry this out. So let's say I want my caption, it's thinking fewer clicks, text size, and I can say generate. So remember if I want to increase, my text size, say, oh, maybe that's a little bit too big. We'll settle with 110. Think of fewer clicks. Okay, maybe this is part of my system thinking. So then I can generate. This is going to stay the same. And that really doesn't quite work. Let's say another one. So I can cycle through these and figure out which of these images is returning a keyword. Maybe I'll go machine and see if a good one comes up. Because really this is about a, a system. Okay, that's a little bit creepy. Avoid that one. Maybe something like that. And then we can copy this image or I can save the image as. So I'll save it, maybe just to my downloads. So I save it here. I can also open this in my browser and do the same thing. So if I type in machine again, we set this to 110, say generate. And there's our creepy image. Let's try a different one. All right, that was great. So then I can just save this, drag it to my downloads, and here we go. Last thing I want to show you is something I'm thinking about. It doesn't exist yet, but it might be nice to take a quote 
and just place it on a picture or on a blank background. Sometimes I do this manually when I'm creating videos. So the idea is to take a quote and put it on an image, maybe a standard background color, font, etc. I might even be able to add a footer to this image. So the idea would be something like this, an interface, where then I can essentially put a quote in the middle of it using a lot of the same logic. When I build this and it's ready, I'll go ahead and share this with you all. So that's it. That's the system that I use in order to make these banner images for all of my blog posts. If you like this video, go ahead and check out this one where I describe my systems mindset, where I set up systems in order to build more efficiency into the activities that I'm doing. Or this video over here is one where I show you a different system that I use in order to try to be more efficient in making this content. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.